Hello beautiful internet family, Dan here from danstube.tv and I'm very excited to bring you some more Lightchee content and this time it's on the Mini SE and I'm combining two features here. So I'm going to be showcasing the follow mode as well as the waypoints for the Mini SE. Now the Mini SE is a relatively new mini drone from DJI. It's kind of replaced the Mavic Mini now. It has the improved wind resistance which matches the Mini 2. It's a very capable drone. I'm actually yeah in love with the Mini SE. It's a fantastic beginner drone for a lot of people. And now that we can actually use the following modes, the tracking modes and the waypoints from Lightchee's application, it really creates a whole new layer of creative opportunity here. And I'm very excited to see uh, beginners out there having the opportunity to set up waypoints and to be able to actually finally follow themselves as they do really unique things in their environment. So first things first, we're gonna be checking out the following mode. Now there is a tracking mode, which is more of an algorithm based or software based tracking mode, similar to the active track mode on the uh, DJI drones that actually have active track. So you draw the box around the subject and it will track you but I'm not the biggest fan of that. I actually really do prefer the following mode from Lightchee and it's something that DJI really should do because what this is actually doing is it's creating a connection point between the controller and the drone. So the application uh, Lightchee actually figures out uh, the distance between the controller and the drone to be able to follow you regardless of if it actually has vision of you. So you can walk you know, through a tunnel, you can walk uh, through like a path of trees and you can be completely invisible to the drone. The drone has no idea where you are in terms of a visual sense, but it's actually tracking the controller, which means you can get some very unique uh, following shots, but it also means that the connection's never gonna drop out, uh, the tracking's never gonna stop because that consistent connection is a lot more reliable than like a software based tracking mode. You can see that I can adjust the altitude as well as the distance and it actually works really well. You know, as you adjust those different parameters, the drone immediately responds and goes to that position. And you can get some very unique shots here. You know, you can change the altitude as you're walking or as you're running, or let's say that you're on a motorbike or a car or something like that that's actually moving. Uh, relatively fast. You can adjust the altitude and the distance and the drone will dynamically move to that point while keeping you perfectly centered and perfectly tracked. So that's something that I was very impressed by. I did mention this in my Mini 2 video, but you got to remember this is a beta. Um, by the time of, of me actually doing this video, this is a beta. It's not even available as a public release right now. The public release for Android will be coming out very soon, but this is literally the Android beta version of Lightchee and it's extremely stable and unbelievably reliable. I honestly had no issues with it, uh, never had it, you know, scare me by kind of trying to figure out where it's going or moving too fast or, you know, no un unexpected kind of movements here. It was just a consistently reliable experience. And the other thing that I really enjoyed using was the heading options. So this is something that we saw with the Mavic 3 where you can have that directional tracking. So depending on where you want the drone to be positioned, the drone will move off to your left or you know behind you let's say or on a diagonal and it will actually track you then on um, that like heading on that position that you've angled it at. This is something that I really do love. This is something that has only just come out officially uh, for the Mavic 3, which is obviously a very expensive drone. It's over 4,000 Australian dollars. But to be able to have that feature in a drone that's under 600 Australian dollars and to still have a very reliable following experience is, yeah, very, very exciting. Um, again, very impressed with how the follow mode worked and it did a great job of keeping me perfectly centered at all times. You know, even though I'm not moving too fast, I occasionally jog here and there. Um, but you know, it's still a moving object, you know, like the controller is still moving and this is still in beta. So there's a lot of like programming and data that's being sent between the application and the drone itself. And again, yeah, just a flawless experience that I was very impressed by. You do have a few other options there in the following settings, but honestly, you can just set it up 
choose your distance and your altitude and it will just follow you flawlessly. So you don't really even have to adjust anything, but you know, the fact that you can just tap a button and then choose the heading, and then the drone's gonna fly, you know, to your front, let's say, or it flies off to the rear right side. And that's just with a very simple tap and the drone will do that. And you can continue doing what you're doing without even thinking about it. That really does open up a lot of creative options for people. Like I mentioned, this is like a $600, 600 Australian dollar drone for the fly more combo. And, you know, we've got high end options now. The fact that we can follow ourselves, the fact that we have waypoints, the fact that we can track and do a few other things, like it really is a powerful application, Lychee. Um, so if you do want to check it out, I actually will have the links below to check it out. Uh, right now, it's just the beta release the, uh, on Android. So iOS users will expect a release around the end of March. So that means that Lightchew will probably have the actual integration with their app in early April. So iOS users have a little while to wait. Android users can apply for the beta. Um, but by the time this video goes live, the public release will probably be out by then based on what Lightchew were telling me. Um, but again, very impressive in its current state. We can still expect some more uh, like reliability improvements some bug fixes some tweaks. And we can still expect it to be even more of a smooth experience. But yeah, this is a really good sign that they're going to put a lot of energy into making this uh, the best experience possible for pilots out there. The other thing I really love about the Lychee application is that you can actually record the audio from your phone. So you can use the microphone on your phone to record audio, meaning that you can narrate while you're flying the drone, meaning that like maybe you really like a specific spot that you're flying in. So you can say, okay, at this point, I really like this footage, um, you know, make sure that you use this clip here. So then you'll have some audio waves that will pop up when you're in your editing program and you can go, okay, at this point I'm talking, at this point I'm talking, I know that they're the points I really wanna keep. And then you can, you know, review that back or you can actually create a whole video dedicated to you just talking about a flight as it's happening uh, in the moment. There's so many options here. It's something that DJI, again, haven't offered us and have removed, which is really annoying, but you can do that through Lightchee, which is another really important thing to mention because a lot of people ask me about this in the comments. So now when we move on to the waypoints mode, this again is one of those experiences that has been flawless. And again, very impressed that this is its current state in its beta. I can't wait to see what the public release is gonna look like. But the waypoints mode is great. You know, you select waypoint and then it actually pulls up the map for you. And that's where you choose where you want to place the waypoints. You also have options to place a uh, point of interest. So you can decide that the drone's going to be facing this direction at one point, and then it's maybe going to be facing a completely different direction at another point. So you have that control at each waypoint. Um, you can also, you know, adjust uh, like the actual flight path just with a pencil. So you can uh, pull out that tool and you can just draw a box around a field, for example, and it's automatically going to set those waypoints for you. You can then obviously adjust them if you want to, but having that pencil tool means that you can literally just draw the path you want to go on and then slowly make some tweaks and adjustments um, after each flight or even before the flight. And I really love that. You know, you can adjust the altitude at each point. You can decide what uh, each waypoint action is going to be, and you can also adjust the point of interest as well. It is a very comprehensive offering. There's lots of other little nuances and options within the settings, but at its core, it's actually a very simple waypoint mode. You can literally, like I said, draw where you want the waypoints to be, or you can manually put them down, but it's really simple to do. I love that about it. It's um, such a simple process and an easy interface to use. With the waypoint settings, you do have quite a lot of control here. So you can adjust uh, the altitude at each waypoint. You can adjust like the gimbal pitch, the uh, cruising speed, as well as the curve size as well. So for example, if your drone's gonna be turning right, instead of it just robotically getting to the point and then turning to the right, which would not look natural, you can actually um, automatically have the drone curve around that corner. So it's going to basically bank around the waypoint instead of going to the waypoint and then turning right, which is going to be probably unusable footage or footage that just looks awkward. But, you know, you can actually use those um, banking shots to create something a bit more dynamic here as it's following the waypoints. And again, very impressive. It still is a tiny bit kind of jumpy and jarring just because it's obviously trying to 
bank around a corner and that's all uh, you know going through an algorithm in a program and this is still in its beta form something that I think will be smoothed out as time goes on but still like no issues with it it's still usable footage um, and I love that it's not just to the point and then it turns which is very robotic it actually does give a bit more of a dynamic banking shot uh, as the drone is turning the corner like I mentioned before you also have options to adjust the point of interest so that means different waypoints can be focused on different points of interest which again gives that dynamic look and you can have the drone looking in all different directions at different points of interest um, and you have options to also capture different photo intervals which again is very handy to have um, and right down the bottom you have actions so in those waypoint settings you can adjust some more actions there if you want to get a little bit more advanced but in its default state you can literally just set up a waypoint and then start recording and just let the drone do its thing and when you finalize the waypoint or the mission as they like to refer to it as it then actually gives you an estimated mission time and a total distance. So really important information to have at a glance, especially that mission time, because if you're thinking about your battery life, you wanna know how long a mission's going to take, uh, just so you can make sure that you can land obviously in time. Total distance is also a very handy metric to know, but you know you can save these missions and then load them up later on. So that's what's so powerful about waypoints, because it allows you to replicate the exact same shot uh, whether that's photos or whether that's videos um, but it allows you to replicate the exact same movement time and time again which is something that's so handy you know like let's say you want to capture something um, throughout the year and you want to get the exact same video you can then capture that with a waypoint you can save that waypoint and then every month you can come back launch your drone load that mission up and then replicate the exact same flight time and time again this is really handy if you want like a change in scenery like let's say you know the the seasons are changing or let's say that it's raining one day well you probably wouldn't want to be flying a drone in the rain but let's say that like uh, the sun goes down you know so as the sun is going down you get a shot then from the mission and then you also get a shot through the day as well so you get two different uh, examples of what it might look like that could be great in real estate you know that could be great for something that you're trying to show uh, the difference of how it's actually going to be displayed as the lights come on let's say for example um, and you have that option to replicate the same mission time and time again so all of those metrics and parameters you know the different heights uh, the different actions that the uh, the different waypoints are going to be conducting so waypoint one might you know take a photo for example waypoint two you might increase the altitude you know and then waypoint three might change the point of interest so it might be looking in a different direction that's something that you can save and then that metadata is saved and can be loaded up and replicated time and time again so just think about how helpful that could be for really anyone it's just such a useful offering to have and something that dji just seem to be slipping up on they still haven't released waypoints for us i think it's very disappointing we haven't seen it with the mavic 3 but you know this is a mini se and we have all of these pro options available to us through the lychee application so in terms of the overall package the overall offering um, i tested following as well as waypoints mode uh, for the mini se through the lychee application again this is in beta public release will be coming very soon which we will expect even more improvements and tweaks but in its current state it is a fantastic offering with just so many things to do you know so many options within each mode like i said the following mode it's not just a following mode the fact that you have more control over it is fantastic the fact that waypoints is such a comprehensive offering and something that you know you as the pilot have the full creative control to really decide exactly what each waypoint's going to do. It's just so exciting to see on a budget-friendly drone. And it actually works flawlessly. Like I was not worried at all. The drone did exactly what I wanted it to do. It followed all of my orders. That sounds very weird. All of my directions, let's say. Um, and it did it flawlessly. So I'm very impressed with Lychee and how they've been able to do this for the Mini 2 and the Mini SE. So definitely look into it. If you've got an Android device, maybe wait a little bit for the public release. Obviously I tested this with the beta just so you guys didn't really have to do that. Um, but again, very impressed with how stable it was or has been so far for me. And I'm sure it will only get better with time. So thank you so much for watching guys. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you've had a chance to check out Lychee for your Mini SE or your Mini 2, 
please let me know in the comments below. I can't wait to hear about all of your following experiences and all of your waypoints that you've set up. Um, and I'll talk to you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Peace.